Welcome back to our series on embedding Looker. Previously, we walked you through our private embedding option. Now, let's dive in and get you started with our other option, SSO embedding with the Embed SDK. This option allows you to embed your Looker content in an iframe. However, unlike our private embedding option, your user can securely view the embedded content without manually logging into Looker via SSO or directly. The Embed SDK also manages the iframe HTML element for you. In this video, we'll go through the basic information you need to get started. We'll cover the SSO embed URL, the SSO embedding flow, and the Embed SDK and code samples. But first, a quick knowledge check. You should understand the iframe HTML element, JavaScript, Looker access control and permissions management, and the concept of authorization and authentication. All right. First, let's look at the SSO embed URL. So how does SSO embedding allow your user to securely view embedded content without manually logging into Looker? Well, at a high level, SSO embedding uses a one-time use URL set on the iframe source. We call this the SSO embed URL. It contains information about the target Looker content you want to embed, the user access permissions, and other information that determine what your user can do during an embed session. When your user accesses your embedded content with the SSO embed URL, Looker automatically logs in your user as an embed user with the permissions provided in the URL. One way to look at it is to think of SSO embedding as URL-based auth as opposed to UI-based auth with our private embedding option. So, how do we create this SSO embed URL? Well, you can create it manually, but we provide a convenient API endpoint on your Looker instance to generate it. It's called Create SSO Embed URL. We will refer to this API endpoint throughout this video. So let's look at some basic parameters you need to pass into the endpoint to generate the URL. There is the target URL parameter, session property parameters like session length, embed user permissions parameters like models, permissions, and user attributes, and the external user ID parameter. First, let's start with the target URL parameter. This is the same URL as the embed content URL mentioned in our previous video on private embedding. This points your iframe to the Looker content you want to embed with the right settings applied, like dashboard filters. Now, let's talk about the session property parameters. These properties define how the session behaves. For example, the session length parameter determines how long your user can stay logged in. Next, let's discuss the parameters covering embed user permissions. You must pass in these permissions so your user can access and interact with your embedded content. For example, the models parameter determines what models your user can access. The permissions parameter determines what your user can do in the session, like viewing a dashboard or creating an alert. The user attributes parameter helps govern your user's data access. But lastly, the most important parameter you need to consider is the external user ID. When your user accesses your embedded content, Looker logs in your user automatically as an embed user, which is also called an external user you must define an external user ID on your SSO embed URL so Looker can associate your user with the correct embed user. If the external user ID does not match any existing embed user ID, then Looker logs in your user as a new embed user with the permissions and ID defined in the URL. Typically, you should use your host application's user ID as the external user ID. We've now walked through the basic parameters you need to pass in to the create SSO embed URL endpoint. The endpoint will return the SSO embed URL for you to set on your iframe source attribute. Keep in mind, each SSO embed URL you generate is unique and can only be accessed 
once by your user. Check out our documentation to learn more about the SSO embed URL and what other parameters are available to generate the URL with our API endpoint. Now, let's walk through the SSO embedding flow. We want your host application to securely embed your Looker content in an iframe for each of your users. Your host application will create an iframe, generate the SSO embed URL for your user, and then set the URL on the iframe source attribute. We'll walk through a high-level architecture example of how your host application could implement the SSO embedding flow. Architecturally, we will focus on three parts. Your host application front end, your host application backend, and your Looker instance. All right, let's get started with your user. First, your user logs into your host application. Your host application backend authenticates and authorizes the user. Next, your host application front end creates an iframe and then requests from the backend the SSO embed URL to set on the iframe. Then, that request to your backend triggers a downstream request to your Looker instance. Your backend determines what permissions your user should have and which embed user your user should map to. Then, your backend calls the create SSO embed URL endpoint with the parameters we previously discussed. Next, the Looker instance generates the SSO embed URL and returns it to your host application backend. The backend returns the URL to the front end and it sets the URL on the iframe source. With your Looker content now embedded in an iframe, your user accesses the embedded Looker content. When this happens, Looker starts a session with the permissions and properties provided by the SSO embed URL and logs the user in as an embed user. After that, keep in mind, Looker expires the URL. So let's say your user's session ends and they return to view your embedded content. Your host application must generate another unique one-time use SSO embed URL to set on the iframe. And there you have it. We've walked through a high-level architecture of the SSO embedding flow. We hope that gives you a basic understanding of how you can implement it. Now, let's discuss how the embed SDK and our code samples make it easier for you to implement the SSO embedding flow. Let's look at that flow again. Our embed SDK automates the steps where your host application front end creates the iframe, requests the SSO embed URL, and sets the URL on the iframe source. For example, let's say you want to embed a dashboard. You initialize the embed SDK with your Looker instance's domain and your backend's endpoint that returns the SSO embed URL. Now, let's configure the embed SDK to build your iframe. You call the create dashboard with ID method with the ID of your dashboard so the SDK embeds the correct Looker content. Next, you call the append to method to tell the SDK where to insert the iframe into your host application DOM. Now, with this basic configuration finished, you call the build method. The embed SDK automatically fetches an SSO embed URL from the endpoint you configured. Then, the SDK creates an iframe with its source attribute set to the SSO embed URL. And then, the SDK appends the iframe to the specified HTML element. Now, your host application front end has an iframe pointing to the SSO embed URL. In addition, we provide code samples linked below to help your host application backend call the create embed SSO URL API endpoint. Keep in mind, the embed SDK can do much more than what we've covered. You can discover more embed SDK functionality in its repository. Links below. All right, good job, folks. We have walked through the SSO embedding with the embed SDK option. We outlined what parameters are needed for your SSO embed URL, an example architecture of the SSO embedding flow, and how you can leverage the embed SDK and our code samples to make implementation easier. Check out our Getting Started documentation, linked below, for more details on the SSO embedding with the embed SDK option. With that, look forward to more videos in this series where we get you started with embedding Looker. See you next time.